I am so pleased to welcome Kevin Harrison to the show, who will be coming back to visit us as a guest speaker for the Mech Chat before Canadian Brass on December 1st. He's a brass musician himself and knows everything there is to know about this wonderful group. Welcome, Kevin. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So, Kevin, not only are you a brass player, mm -hmm. you play in a symphony, you play sometimes with New Philharmonic, I do, you just I told do. me. Yes, I've been subbing with New Philharmonic uh, here and there for about six or seven seasons, so it's always a pleasure to be here to perform and, and to work in this beautiful space. Well, it's an honor to have you, and you have your own brass quintet. I do. I have a group called Axiom Brass. Uh, we just started our 12th season, wow. and we're a group dedicated to performing concerts and doing educational programming all around the world, um, and have been and excited to do so. <laughs> so did you start your own quintet? I didn't actually start the group. Uh -huh. uh, the group started in New York in 2007, mm -hmm. and then I joined in uh, about a year and a half later. But since then, I've really helped to propel the group forward, um, and we've become the most awarded brass quintet in the United States with uh, 10 competition prizes, um, wow. as, well as, as well as an educator's award. Um, and we've just been riding through that and presenting more concerts, commissioning more, more pieces, and just bringing music to, to everyone everywhere. That's incredible. And, and you were telling me earlier, you've been to China. Where else have you been? We've been to China just this past January. Uh, we've been to Portugal. We've been to Spain. We've been to Korea. We've been to Japan. We've been to Alaska twice. <laughs> and uh, we are making our second trip to the Dominican Republic in February. You know, um, the first time I saw Canadian Brass, mm -hmm. I had no idea what to expect, right? So I'm, I'm expecting kind of a stuffy, um, you know, sort of a little right. concert of, of sorts. And I had no idea, but the humor mm -hmm. and the expression and the communication and the connection with the musicians to me is what absolutely captivated me, how they're mm -hmm. absolutely having a conversation on stage through music that is, um, it transcends age, it transcends gender, it transcends everything, and everybody mm -hmm. can understand it without one word being spoken. Right, right, absolutely. And what Canadian Brass does really well is they break down that barrier between audience and musician. They do. Um, a lot of times uh, people can feel that classical music can be stuffy and that they have no connection with the, with the musicians. And they have completely abolished that and, and, and just smashed that to bits um, by presenting concerts where they even go out into the audience and, and do right. surprise things. I might have ruined the surprise, but, um, but they are they're, they're really wonderful about that, and they've been doing that for over 40 years. I actually discovered them when I was in middle school. I had a really good friend who was a trumpet player, wow. and he would always bring recordings to me. Um, and my first experience is hearing them do uh, the tuba player, Chuck Dallenbach, doing Flight of the Bumblebee on tuba. Wow. And I never thought that would ever be possible on, on tuba, and I was just so fascinated with that sound. And I just started buying their recordings, listening to them more and more. And it really inspired me to, to pursue my own chamber group. And I started one, a chamber group immediately in school, and I've been involved in chamber music ever since. It's been a passion of mine. So, does your uh, do you think Canadian brass influenced the way you present your shows? In a way, yes. So, brass quintet tends to have two sides, okay. um, two extremes. There are there's the pops entertainment side of things, mm -hmm. and then there is the purely academic and art side. Uh, what I like elements of both, mm -hmm. and what I try to do with Axiom Brass is bring those two together, um, presenting new works and presenting uh, more academic pieces, but presenting it to an audience uh, that, in a way, to the audience that is much more entertaining, that breaks down that wall and is much more accessible. Canadian Brass is really wonderful at giving a just absolutely entertaining, just fun show all the time. So when you are, are going to do the Mac Chat, the pre-show, mm -hmm. the lecture dem, the educational part, so that audiences can learn a little bit more mm -hmm. about what they're going to see before the show, do you know what you're going to do, what you're going to talk about? or Not completely, but I do want to sort of go through the history of brass, because brass has been with us for generations and generations. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to have a negative stigma of, of brass quintet as being loud and 
and and, and blaring, um, but uh, that's how they're portrayed on TV a lot of times. But brass in the orchestra tends to have the widest dynamic range. They can play some of the most quiet, gentle passages, and they can actually signal the loudest I mean, things and and that we have. And so it's 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 really fascinating to bring that into a in a chamber setting, and explore those 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 sides. Uh, the brass can sound very much like a human voice. Um, and it has that expressive quality, and it can also signal excitement and joy. See, now I think of brass as adding in the excitement mm -hmm. or the majesty, mm -hmm. you know, to to a number. But to me, I think when you have a band and it has a brass section, that's when you know it's going to be a great band <laughs> and a great show because right. it's going to have this energy Absolutely. to it. I think it adds a tremendous um, energy to any to any. Um, group that you hear. Mm -hmm. I don't know, that's my opinion. But, and it's um, also a very flexible ensemble. Um, the Canadian brass, they move around a lot. It's easy to carry the instruments. It's easy to blend and sound um, sound good uh, in, in various different configurations. So um, it's a lot different than a classical concert in that respect, that they can move around and they give you that vis visual perspective as well as just sounding really wonderful. Canadian brass sort of is is the granddaddy of them all, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of of all of these groups, it's it's been around for a long time. Yeah, over over four, well over forty years. Almost, they're coming up on fifty years soon. Um, they have uh, they started out um, doing educational programs, much like my group, as as I was saying, and they really have made a name for themselves to become the most famous brass group. Even people that don't no brass quintets have heard of the of Canadian, Canadian brass. brass. Right. So I heard that their instruments are 24 karat gold plated. <laughs> have you heard this? Yes, and they have. They have very different. Uh, they've worked with very different materials uh, through their sponsors. And um, yes, they do have 24 karat plated gold, gold instruments. And um, uh, Charles Dallenbach, the tuba player, actually plays with a tuba that has a carbon fiber bell. Um, which makes it much lighter when you're moving wow. around on stage. And carbon fiber is actually a material that sounds very, very good. So, um, yeah, they do. They have very fancy instruments. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it is. I can't imagine what it costs to insure one of those. I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> I bet they buy a seat for it on the plane when yeah, they travel. Yeah, I always do. So do yes. you really? You buy <laughs> a seat do. for it? Yes. I, I guess you have to. Mm -hmm. right? That is all the time we have. I want to thank you so much for coming, and we look forward to hearing your talk um, before Canadian Brass on December 1st. Thank you. There are two chances to see Canadian Brass on December 1st at 4 p.m. and at 8 p.m. While you're here, don't forget to come hear Kevin speak at our Mac Chat, too. For tickets or more information, visit atthemac.org or call 630-942-4000. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the theater and next time on Backstage Buzz. Oh, man.